wanna be a manchi boy? Mamamachi boys! Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, you know. Just the oh, wait, regular. You don't know. The regular stuff is up. The same old thing. The same old, same old. The regular, same old. Same oldians. Audio only version. The edition in which we're doing audio only. Audio visual. Without the visual, just the audio. We we don't we don't need to worry about looking sexy on camera because like we're not on camera. I mean we're on a Zoom call together, but that doesn't matter. So, but and of course you can imagine that we are totally sexy for each other on our Zoom call. <laughs> yeah, we made sure to look all nice. Yeah. So if you're watching this on YouTube, do not adjust your monitor. There is no problem. It's actually pretty funny because we it is pretty much the same, but we just didn't purposely light it or put on some weird backgrounds or anything. It's just our regular studio backgrounds, which are actually pretty cool. I don't cool, put on regular you know? crazy backgrounds, you know, usually anyways. I mean, we don't. And you know what else we don't put on? We don't put on airs. We don't put on any airs. We don't? No. Oh. Hell no. I'm looking up uh, the Facebook page of the of the place we went. Before we talk about where we went, let's talk about where we've been. You know what what uh, what all's led up to this moment? Oh my gosh! Yes, how we went on a break. We haven't been here in a while. Do you think our fans were waiting with bated breath? Fans, uh, automobile. <laughs> I know. Oh, sigh. Huh? Well, I don't know. Our fans were like, where the hell were you guys? And I looked at them and I was like, lady, are you nuts? And they were like, what? First of all, I'm not a lady. And I was like, well, some of you are ladies. And they were like, okay. I believe the only person to really ask me, you know, what's going on with Munchie Boys is maybe Jamie Abradovich, possibly Emily Teffer. Other nice. than that, nobody at all seems to have noticed that we've been gone. Yeah, I know. So everybody else is just like, yep, we could uh, take it or leave it. We don't really care. So, yeah. And I'm like, whatever, assholes. And they're like, hey, don't call us that. We're your fans. And I was like, well, okay. I, I do have a client that whenever I try to avoid like re- responding to her, or, uh, working on her projects, she's always like, are you munching? And it's like, <laughs> no, I'm not munching. I just don't really feel like doing any work today. <laughs> are you? Oh, like, <laughs> like it's always the go-to for her to assume that you're doing yeah. munchy boys. That's so Although t- today she was like, can we uh, video chat at 11? And I'm like, you're like, Sorry. oh, I'm actually munching. <laughs> Sorry, Damn I got to munch. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. So usually it's almost like, Weird, like, don't assume I'm munching, but then this time it was like, oh, damn, I'm actually munching. When you assume I'm munching, you make an ass out of you and me. Isn't that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to tell the the kind folks where we went, or should we keep talking about how we got there? Or should we co- oh, sp- come up with, like, a weird, like, like a word game to see if anybody can kind of figure out where where we go by the... Uh, <laughs> it's a Was it a color? Or is it in a, you know, I, I don't know. How does this really work if we're just playing ourselves we because we know where we went okay this place it starts with a color or a sheen or a metal yeah think think metallic and not lead we didn't go to lead we didn't go to like oh lead belly i guess that's a real place isn't it let's just let's just say yeah think of a metal and it's a standard quote unquote it's a precious metal and if you think about a blank standard you know i mean if i were a rapper a really successful one i might have a grill made of this and I'm not talking about a Weber. <laughs> okay, so we got we got a couple calls in. Let me go to the phone real quick. Okay, right. what? Uh, hello, hello. This is Munchie Boys. This is Tony speaking. Uh, what did you uh, think that that metal was? Um, gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You actually got. Yep, gold. So the really? first Caller word one is gold. All right. Yeah. Can you believe? It? I figured everybody would know. We're but, gonna send I mean, them especially... tickets tickets to the uh, to the show. Wait, which show? The show. Which show? Uh, just whatever one we have. Like, yeah. if we put on a show or something. It's, okay, it's, I'm a big fan. It's a it's a Limp Biscuit show from 2001. I don't know where the tickets came from, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> it already happened. Since okay. it's a radio, thank you, caller. Since it's an audio pod, you can hear the tickets. I'm holding the tickets in my hand. See that? 
That's the sound oh, of the that's that's the sound of the stock. tickets. That's the card stuff. Yeah. You're not playing with that. You can tell that's a real ticket. You're going to be doing it all for the nookie like 19 years ago with these tickets. <laughs> yeah, that's not an e tick. <laughs> that's an actual thick card stock from Ticketmaster. Yeah, the. Let's see. To show you how long ago this was, let's see how much the uh, the Ticketmaster uh, fee was. Seventeen dollars and eighty five cents. Wow. Damn. Thank you, Ticketmaster. Um, second word. First word's gold. Second word. It's uh, I'm uh, do, do, do charades, Tony. They can't see it, but uh, do a get, show me like you know. I'll pretend like I don't know. Okay, hat. No. no. Root roof. Peak. Close, um, but no cigar. Hill? Is it a hill? Oh, it's it's a uh, it's not quite as low as a hill. It's a. Is it a molehill? Let's just say it's it's really rocky terrain and it's very high up. Denver, altitude. Colorado. There, they have those. They have them there. Oh, uh, medical marijuana. Oh, dang it! No, no, I said tall. It's like it's like terrain. Oh, mountain! It's a mountain. Yeah, and what type of mountain? That's you, well, you said gold before, right? Yeah, so where'd we go? We went to Golden Mountain. Gold or Mountain. Gold Mountain. I, I think <laughs> gold Mountain, whatever, you know. Gold Mountain Restaurant in Exarban Village, folks. There you have it. Gold, yeah, That's I guess, where I guess we they're went. not Golden Mountain, they're Gold Mountain. And I, I must preface by saying I... I've been here plenty of times because yes. I am a fan. I didn't go here not knowing anything, but I did get stuff that I don't think I've ever ordered. So I think my introduction to Gold Mountain was with uh, one Andrew Bailey on New Year's. Was it New Year's maybe, or was it Whoa. before New Year's? You know, a couple years back, um, and he was telling me all about how when he was living in New York City. He would have dim sum mm -hmm. all the time, and there's all kinds of options for dim sum. And I'm nice. like, dim sum? <laughs> I give me some of that. I don't even know what you're talking about. And he's like, oh, it's like there's this menu, and there's all these little items, and you get some of this, and you get some of that, and you get the pork buns, and you get the weird ribs, and uh, yeah. Oh my oh, gosh! Man, it the, opened the options my eyes, are endless, and it opened my mouth. Here's the thing, and my stomach. Here's the thing: the options are mouths. endless, but the prices do limit you. And I'm not saying it's expensive. I'm just saying when you look at the dim sum menu you want almost everything yes well not everything i don't want that like squid or whatever it was oh but, yeah the squid curry but yeah well, uh, but when like you that. look there's some stuff i definitely don't want just because it's not my style but i want a ton of stuff and the thing is is like when everything is like 395 or 4 495 or 895 you're limited you can't go too crazy I felt like I went crazy today, though, a little it's bit. It's easy to go crazy because you're like, oh, i got to have some of that. Oh, i got to have some of that. Oh, i got to have some of those. And then suddenly you're like, uh -huh. my bill is $67. And you're like, hey, uh, Gold you're Mountain like, guy, that happen? look over there. It's uh, a Ming Dynasty vase. And then they look over and then you <laughs> jump the fence and you run down Exarbon. <laughs> And then you get tackled and by security. And they're like, you're lying. We don't even have one of those. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. And I'm, you're like, well, you're the one that fell for it. I can't believe they fell for it in my imaginary scenario that never happened and never will happen. Oh, man. Okay. I'm li I pulled up the menu. I'm literally going back over it oh, to try no. to remember. Going I'm back trying in to time. remember. Oh, I remember what I got. So I let's see. Uh, we're still in the middle of a global pandemic, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh-huh. So yep, we, ate, out still going we on. ate outside on the balcony. On the patio, not the balcony. The balcony. I always get refers ba patios <laughs> and porches and balconies confused. You know that, Tony. <laughs> the balcony would be high up. We were low. We weren't on the gold mountain. Remember the time we were, we were on your basin. patio, and I was like, "Is this a patio or a balcony?" And I was like, "It's a deck." And then you were like, "Lady, are you nuts?" <laughs> oh, I already said that. Dang it! How many times can I say that? I'll, we'll keep a running too tally. Many. We'll run it. You know. That's too many. That's too. That was too too many. We'll add the number of times that you say it to the on screen. Yeah. There's no screen. <laughs> There's oh no man, screen. should we? Uh, oh, ladies and gentlemen. So I've been riding around on a moped since we last talked. And when I told Aaron let's go to Gold Mountain, I was like, I'm gonna cruise over there on the moped. So I rode over there on the 78 Peugeot 103, a nice green color. Everybody was just looking at it like. Whoa, nice bike, man. Yeah, from now on, our show's called The Moped Boys. 
Oh, are you telling me you're going to get a moped? No. Nope. <laughs> you got to find another boy for that. No ped. Exactly. I'll do the munching. So you do the moped. Sticking with it'll the work out fine. You know, it'll, uh, wait, I'm sticking moped, with the munching, munchy, too. Munchy, 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 moped. Mo munchy ped boys. Oh, my God. Should we dive into what we got already? Oh, Should man. We dive I don't in? know. What did we get? Should we dive Oh man, you tell them what you got for. Well, first off, I'm looking at the on their website here. They're still open, so we could actually have them deliver more food right now as we talk. Because I'm sure as we get off this thing, so you're saying you could get dinner from the exactly. same place. Exactly, I could get a some authentic Ooh. Hong Kong style Cantonese, or I could get some authentic Hong mm -hmm. Kong style Cantonese. Oh, it's the same thing. So at this point, I would seriously consider getting it again for dinner. You know what? Like that, we should how, actually do that. How. I would totally be down. <laughs> What if we literally did that and I convinced Whitney that we're going back I like, Whitney, on the patio again? Get them. in. We're, uh, we're going back for more. <laughs> we're climbing that it's mountain like, Tony, again. didn't you have enough? No, Whitney. And why do you sound like we that in Aaron's imaginary scenario? I don't know. Hey, I think that she should be plenty happy because remember I had lefties? Well, I gave them to her and she happily Oh, did she? Them. Maybe I should go back and get the orange chicken this time. Ooh. Okay, let's dive in. What'd you get? Uh, well, first of all, I'll tell you what I didn't get. Okay, that's a that's a lot of menu. I items. didn't get the orange flavored chicken. I was going to just out of a uh, curiosity of our the conversation from last time that we had uh, a Chinese type arresty rant. Um, and uh, the description for their orange flavored chicken they call it orange flavored chicken, not orange chicken, by the way. So. It's chopped, oh, man, battered, and fried yeah, chicken pieces cake. coated in a sweet orange flavored chili sauce, which thickens to glaze, which sounds amazing. I love how you're reading that, like what you want to get next which time. <laughs> kind of sounds like the orange flavored chicken that I had in Lancaster, Ooh. California, which apparently nothing in Omaha will ever live up to. Maybe this would have been that. But you know what? I'll never know because I didn't get that. Oh, man. No. What I got was... Mongolian beef. Ooh. Because uh, in Bill and Ted's uh, Excellent Adventure, Genghis Khan was in there, and he's a Mongol. Oh, 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 oh. And although he was eating mostly Twinkies, Mongolian beef. Yeah. That's, oh, my that's gosh. My, uh, oh, my gosh. That's my logic. It's a little, uh, don't do the math or think that about it too much. That sounds great. Mongolian beef. And uh, my first thought was it was a little more Mongolian than beef. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> and what do you mean? You know, by, it, uh, what did you mean by that? Well, I mean, there was an awful lot of like the the things that aren't beef on there at first the glance, and a lot of like yeah. the the sliced onions and like cut up Mongolians, and yeah. <laughs> you know. But um, I know, yeah, that, but it was like, good. Do and, you think oh, there was camping on beef? The, uh, <laughs> there was plenty of beef. It just at first glance it was like mm, I don't know about this. They they chose to put all the onions on top. Also, I got a, a steamed barbecue pork bun Aww. in the dim sum menu. Aww. I was going to go like crazy like Tony did and get more dim sum, but, you know, I figured, uh, oh, man, that's just going to be, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, can, I, can't, I can't really eat uh, 50 gosh darn things off the menu. I could. I wish I could. I, wait, wait, what am I kidding me? <laughs> wait a minute. I've got a question, Tony. What? What'd you get? Oh, 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 are you ready for my rundown? Are you ready for my rundown? It's a Saturday party. Okay, I don't know the lyric to that. Y'all ready for this? Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I got is my main entree broccoli beef. Whoa. Broccoli beef under the Chinese section of the menu. Now, I will come back to what I got, but first I want to talk about the menu since that's what I was just explaining. I got broccoli beef from the Chinese section of the menu. I'm going to okay. read you the sections that this menu has because this is extensive, folks. There, The first section is called Cantonese, so there's very specific Cantonese uh, dishes. Uh, a couple pages of that. Oh, three pages, it looks like. And then it gets to Chinese. Uh, two, there's two pages of that. And then there's specialties. And by that, I think it's just, it must be, well, specialties. General So, sesame chicken, orange flavored chicken, triple Mongolian, happy family, all that. So you get it. And then it gets to their dim sum, which is basically a bunch of different little, mainly small dishes of all different kind of different style of stuff like 
steamed egg custard bun, steamed barbecue pork bun, steamed creamy egg yolk bun. Like, just think of it that way. It's all these different varieties of small plates and stuff. Um, and then it goes into some lunch specials. But so going back, I got the oh, the broccoli beef and it was oh, so lovely. Anyway, so it came with I got it with steamed rice. That's the broccoli beef. I also got the barbecue pork buns. Good call. And they were absolutely heavenly, perfectly warm and soft. They did not taste like they were, you know, prepared earlier or old or anything like that. Not that I would expect it to be, but still. Oh, man, I want them again now. Um, And then I also got the uh, from the dim sum menu. I got the spring rolls that had shrimp in them and it came with a peanut sauce. Here's the thing. I know I sound like a pig, folks, but here's the thing. I ate my whole entree and I had three of the four uh, pork buns. uh, But and then I had one of the spring rolls. I gave Whitney one pork bun and one spring roll. So I'm not a complete fat pig. Lucky Whitney. I know. Imagine that you're just at home doing your own thing. And then all of a sudden somebody gets home and they just give you stuff leftovers. Yum. I mean, I would be happy if I wasn't. That's like a pleasant surprise. I just realized as you were reading off the menu that they have lunch specials. Ooh, are they different? Why didn't we get a lunch special? It includes a egg drop or hot sour soup plus an egg roll or crab Orangoon. Oh, man. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to look at the lunch specials, too. And L14 on the lunch menu is orange chicken. Oh, my gosh. And not to mention, are we going to have to do a round two? Because the thing is, is, and I don't mean today, but because that's just a lunch special. But think about it. We could have got, look how low those prices are. I know. Like you said, egg drop soup. Egg roll or crab rangoon. Ah. And that would, oh, we, I think we failed. But, well, here's the thing. That's better bang for your buck. But I feel like the episode is better because we tried different stuff, maybe. I don't know. Like, yeah, but we could have had uh, <laughs> egg dropper hot and sour soup. What oh would you have gosh, gone for? I, I would have gone for the hot and sour. Well, look, the broccoli beef, uh, $9.95. How much did I pay for it? Like a well, million dollars. Wait a minute. Okay, I found a flaw, folks. I found a big damn flaw. Oh, my God. I'm mad. Are you ready, Aaron? Yeah. Broccoli beef. Broccoli beef, $12.95, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm looking at my receipt or my my thing because that says broccoli beef is normally $12.95. Down on the lunch specials, which we were there for, 11 a.m. to 3, it says broccoli beef. Uh, for nine ninety five plus, I should have gotten the soup and the egg roll or crab and goon. Do you realize that that I'm honestly mad, food mad? I'm food mad because he didn't even say, "Oh yeah," like basically he shouldn't even ask. Like it should have been nine ninety five, and he should have just brought me the soup and the crab and goon or egg roll. Unless the either a. The fact that we had the regular menus, we were like, yeah, I'll take this, you know, might have been the. Uh, yeah, but still, that's kind of a scam. Like, literally, I think that's kind of messed up. Or maybe like, with the. I'm, uh, I'm food mad. Maybe with global pandemic, maybe they dropped the lunch specials, too. Who knows? Or or here's the thing. Maybe maybe I did get charged nine ninety five, and now I almost like am wondering. I'm going to have to go back and look at my total well, because you, I am kind of uh, mad. definitely like, did not because your total was like twenty four dollars or something to that effect. Yeah, so then it was, uh, so it should have been, yeah, I'm going to figure this out because I'm literally food mad. I was in a good food mood until I saw that, and I was like, we got screwed, kind of. like. Yeah, know. and the same thing here. My Mongolian beef was a uh, $9.95 you got for that the too. lunch special versus the st- steam pork barbecue. Yeah, so the steam barbecue pork buns were three fifty, and so three fifty plus, and then where's my, my spring rolls? I'm food mad. And not only because of price, I'm food mad because that means I could have got the soup and either an egg roll and crab and goon on top of everything else. And it would have actually been cheaper. Maybe we should march back there with with a water gun, squirt guns. I'm literally food mad. And say, mad. like, you know, your orange chicken or your life. Okay, here's the thing. And Gold go Mountain, jail. if you're listening, I'm mad. Here's the thing. I love the food and the service was awesome and the guy was really nice. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But here's the thing. I'm food mad. I should have got not only the cheaper price, but I should have got the variety of the soup and the crab and gunner egg roll. You screwed me. 
Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's funny because I am. I was, once I saw that, I did get annoyed. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Oh, my God. All right. That's it. Well, I mean, I, I don't want to yeah. make any like actual threats because if something horrible happens to the place, I don't, you know, because <laughs> you know, we enjoyed it and we'll certainly be back. But I mean, gosh, darn it, you know. Yeah. So seven dollars. I got seven dollars in dim sum. And I should have paid nine ninety five, so my total should have been basically seventeen dollars plus tax. So yeah, I mean I I'm food mad. I can't help it. So folks, when you go look at the lunch menu, because if you don't specifically ask for the lunch special, it looks like you'll get screwed. And you know what they might try to say? Well, the lunch special is actually a little bit of a smaller portion. No, that that can't be true because the portion wasn't that big. Anyway, I sound like I'm on a negative tangent, but let's go back to the positives. It tasted great. The food was really good. I I loved the service. So basically, I think I just have food regret that I didn't like notice that. And I kind of I am mad that they didn't offer that and say, oh, the lunch special is the same thing, but cheaper and with additional items. Well, there was the one thing where like, you know, the, the lady tried to take our order. And we're like, uh, ah. And you're like, Aaron, do you know what you want? And I'm like, do you know what you want? And you're like, uh, you know, we we're like, yeah. just come back in a few minutes. And then like almost immediately the guy came in and was like, all right, you know what you want? Obviously, yeah. he must not have known that she, you know, was told, just told to. Uh-huh. Yeah. But. And it's, yeah, I've had some different, situ- different uh, experiences there with like good and bad service. Not, I shouldn't say bad, but just like chaotic service. Like one time they mixed up my order with somebody else's and then like. I went to go get takeout and I like was wearing my mask and I was kind of worried because all these people were starting to come in and I was literally just like, uh, like they told me it'd be ready at a certain time and then it wasn't. So I was literally around like, like people in there and I was getting annoyed because COVID obviously. And I was like, God damn it. And I was like, lady, are you nuts? And she goes, do you know what you want to order? And I was like, I know. Okay. That didn't make sense. But yeah, overall, I love the food and I will keep going there. But next time I will learn my goddamn lesson and I will order the mother lunch special one. Oh, we could have had sesame balls. Those are good. Oh, sesame (laughs) balls. That's stupid. Oh, my God. I was literally going to try to make some like dirty joke of like sesame, like street, like balls, like Big Bird's balls or something. No, Tony. (laughs) No. No. Sesame. No. Sesame. Bert and Ernie's balls. <laughs> I, I, am I zany? Am I, do I have a food high still? Oh, yeah. That's the other thing, folks. We're recording this at 7 p.m. It's almost 7 p.m. right now. And we munched at 11 a.m. So we've had eight hours to ponder these thoughts. Wait, has it been eight hours? Seriously? Yeah. What well, if you're like, damn, time to eat again? Where does the time go? I know. Exactly. Man, I, I mean, it's one thing to realize that <clears throat> 2020 is an endless vortex of suck, you know, but, uh, and I mean time yeah. mostly, but everything's too. But it's yeah, another thing entirely to say that, like, uh, it's been eight hours. I feel eight hours older, Tony. So much well, closer I to feel- death. Do you want to know what I feel? I feel I feel four hours less full and four hours more hungry. Ah, uh, what am I going to do for dinner now? It's dinner time, Tony. What am I doing sitting here oh, talking to you and all man. these fine people on uh, whatever they're listening to? Oh, my to? God. We have a, a very unique situation right now, which is we usually do this right after we eat after lunch. So do you know the predicament we're in now? Talking about the food is only making us hungry for dinner. It's totally making us hungry for dinner. But you know what that means? Also, that means we go back to maybe Gold that Mountain and march back and say that like, make, passion. match our prices for lunch special. <laughs> what? No? Yeah. Uh, maybe it brings out food passion in our eyes. Like when we're talking about food, like we usually talk about it when we're full. So we're like, yeah, food. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I have uh, no food. passion in my eyes, Tony. But maybe if we talk about it right before we're about to eat, we're like, oh, you know what would be so good? Oh, man. Go to Tasty Pizza. Order two of them. Or, um, or what else? Oh, man. Oh, you had flavors again uh, for the first time in a long time. I've got lifeless eyes, Tony. Black eyes, like a <laughs> do doll's do you have dolls? eyes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, do you have doll's eyes? 
Um, oh, he's drinking a Coca-Cola. I see. No, it's a Coke Zero Sugar. Yeah, get it right, Tony. Nice. When are you going to get that uh, um, sponsorship? It's like, damn. Um, oh, okay. So I wanted you to... We could either save this or maybe you could give a rundown about Bill and Ted. I totally could. Um, in case you guys have been living under a rock, and if you have been, good for you. Go back under there and come back out later, maybe in about a year or two. <laughs> uh However, there's one absolute shining moment in the year 2020 thus far. And no, I'm not talking about the meteor, which might hit Earth in a, in a month or two. That would be a literally, literally a shining moment. Bill and Ted face the music. Ah ha ha. What's that? I just go, ah ha ha, like excited. Ah, okay. So the new Bill and Ted movie, if you haven't been uh, following Bill and Ted in their... Um, not the cartoon series, not the live action TV series, but in the original Excellent Adventure and Bogus Journey, they now have a third movie, Face the Music. And uh, it's a delightful movie. If you're a fan of like a Bill and Ted's and the Bill and Ted movies, you'll quite enjoy it. If you're like Derek Silkman and you think the uh, second movie is a, uh, I think you said like a steaming turd or something. You obviously don't understand the idea of what a Bill and Ted movie is. Because, I mean, the thing about Bill and Ted is, you know, it's not, ah, it's, I, don't, I can't even really describe it. It's like, it's not like a regular thing. It's not like a, you know, like a Marvel thing or like a tentpole thing or even a Back to the Future thing. It's like its own thing. I mean, mm -hmm. the characters are the, kind of like the whole point, you know, and it's not really a... It's all about character. It's all about the characters and like the characters in this one, the new Face the Music, even though it's 31 years later since the original was released in theaters, which makes it like probably 35 years since the original was shot because the original was shot and shelved and was originally going to go direct the video if it came out at all before they put it in front of test audiences. I mean, it feels very much like, you know, Alex Winter and, and uh, Keanu Reeves are really picking right back up on the character. That's awesome. Like nothing was lost. Exactly. Like it's, it's really like, and it's not them trying to like pretend like they're like, you know, 17 or something. It's literally them at the age they are now. Yeah. But it's their characters. And it really, it's, it, it comes across, you know, believable and that these are really who these people are based off of who they were when we saw them last. And the actors who play their daughters are amazing. The one who plays uh, Keanu Reeves' daughter, like, totally gets, like, the open, like, slack jaw expression and kind of, like, the weird delayed response and the, whoa, like, exactly like him. But not, like, in a way, <laughs> that's awesome. Not in a way that's, like, feels like she's, like, just ripping him off, but in a way that's, like, you could believe that this is somebody that actually, like, grew up with this guy as, as her dad. You know, yeah. it's, just, it's, it's really incredible. And, um, again, I mean, when people ask me how the movie is, I mean, I want to say it's, like, a great, amazing movie, knowing that most people probably aren't going to really get it or understand it, and some people might not even like it. But if you love Bill and Ted movies, if you like the idea of Bill and Ted movies, yeah, it's an absolute fantastic movie nice. in that series, and it's easily the most heartwarming one. I mean, I was like tearing up, you know, and like thinking, Whoa. like, man, you know, nice. this is this is really. You know, I guess I'm here. gonna have to watch it now. Do I wish they? Had more of it? Do I wish there was like other options? And it's a fairly short movie. I mean, it's basically like the minimum you can have for a feature length these days. You know, it wasn't like some kind of. But on the other hand, you know, you don't want to sit through like Infinity War with Bill and Ted. You know, you want to go, you know, see what the characters are up to. And so, I mean, it wasn't perfect. It by, by no means was it a perfect movie. Yeah. You know, but and it's a low budget movie, which I like low budget movies. And I think, you know, we live in a world where like, your options for movies, especially, you know, pre COVID were mega budget movies for like 200 million or bigger budget movies for like 220 million, which is insane. You know, I don't want to see like giant CG spectacles with like, you know, like dozens of superheroes, like spinning off of things and fighting things. <laughs> you know, I want to see like a good story with good characters that I like. And, yeah. uh, and that's what this one delivered on, you know? So it, it really feels like it came off at the right time where like, where we need this movie. Like this movie could be the one thing that actually, brings us back together and reminds us that, you know, we're all people and our time on this earth is very finite. And uh, mm -hmm. that being said, uh, I tried to watch it on, on Vudu at first. I was like, I wanted to watch it right as it came out, right? You know, right when it came out on midnight, uh, you know, 
You wanted to be one of the first people to watch it. And so I messaged to uh, Sam Rocha. I was like, hey, you know, what are you going to get on? And he's like, uh, getting on Voodoo. And like, they offered you the chance to buy it and to rent it. Now, and this is the, most, the first time I've ever actually like purchased a movie, like a first run movie for home stuff, which I imagine a lot of people are doing for the first time. Really? Now. The first time? Damn. And uh, I hate it. The experience was horrible because like, you know, some sites were like quite clear. You're renting this and you watch it for like 48 hours from the first time you start. Others, you know, weren't really so clear as to whether you buy this thing or not. And for twenty four dollars or twenty five dollars or whatever. Yeah, that's a lot. If it's twenty five dollars for like the rights to watch something for 48 hours. Screw that. Yeah. I mean, if it's twenty five dollars for the rights to watch something and then like you own it and definitely can watch it, you know, like forever yeah. or until you have the service or whatever. It's like, OK, you're like, at least I feel like I'm getting something, you yeah. know, and like. Of course, I want to like pay for the thing. I want to like you know show like you know the the filmmakers that like hey, I'm glad you made this and make more of them. Here's my money. Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, so I got it on Vudu, and Vudu was like, well, first I had, was looking at Amazon, right? And Amazon, you there's a button you can like the pre-order button, and I clicked the pre-order button to see if it would give me any options, and it basically said, all right, you purchased it. Yeah. You know, you've got it pre-ordered. Looking on this like a uh, this website thing or this web. Uh, what was it? I was looking on the online, trying to figure out when, like, when the movie's gonna be available. Is it gonna be available like at midnight? Yeah. I wasn't. Un- I was unsure of whether I'd be able to watch Amazon right when it came out, so I canceled that and got the one off Vudu. Nice. Vudu cl- very clearly had the option of renting it or purchasing it, and the price difference was like five dollars. So I was like, "Well, I'm gonna purchase yeah, it." Yeah. So you were like, "I'm gonna buy on it. this site just so you can feel good about it." And I'm watching, so I had to cancel the Amazon thing. So I could get it, get it on Vudu. I'm watching the countdown, 40 minutes, 35 minutes, 10 minutes. And then it's finally it's like, all right, I'm going to turn the lights down. I'm going to grab a bowl of popcorn. I'm going to watch this. Yeah. I click play. Nothing happens. I'm like, all right, well, there's obviously everybody in the world's watching this right now. It refreshes. Suddenly it plays the Orion logo. And then I get a, a warning. Your system is incompatible for, for HD playback. Oh, my. And the way they had it tiered, you're basically paying $25 for the... Ultra HD, $25 for the HD or $25 for the SD. Yeah. And so it basically had the option to like at that point, like, I don't know, watch or buy the SD version. And I was like, well, I didn't just pay all this money for to watch this in SD. Exactly. So I went ahead and got it on Amazon. It's pressing in the back of my mind. The God, that other voodoo site. They're going to say I can't yeah, like okay. get the, my money back. They're going <laughs> to say like, well, you know, you should have read the terms and services that you agreed to when you clicked that. And um, uh-huh. God, it just irritated me. And like it definitely like cut into my enjoyment of the movie. And then um, at the end, I was like, well, now I got to see if like the, any of the two clips that I s- submitted for uh, for the movie are going to be available. Uh huh. And I didn't see any of the clips you know, actually in there. Damn I didn't see it. Being used, which is fine. There's plenty of other stuff. And like what they did was cute, but they could have definitely worked more of the user submitted video clips. And if you pause the stuff, you'll notice that like at some point when they do like the big infinity screen where there's like showing you all the things that were sent. Yeah. They're very clearly like taking parts, sections of it and copying it over. Oh, so know? like instead of actually grabbing something from other users, that's uh I can't complain that like, yeah, you guys didn't use my video clip. Yeah, but that is that detail even though that is a little OCD to analyze that, but the thing is is I totally get that. That's I would literally think about something like that too, like okay, you could have at least put mine in the little window of like one of the <laughs> the thousands of other ones. In 1989, I mean Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure was my absolute favorite movie. Yeah. I love the idea. I had the soundtrack. I wasn't really a big fan of any of the songs, but the fact that they were songs from Bill and Ted made them really good to me. You know, to me. I mean, like, yeah. like, I still have them like they're in my brain. You're like, the, do you want to play? You play? You know, like, <laughs> I don't know what who the band is. I don't care who the band is. I don't yeah. really care about the song. It just nostalgia. The fact that it's, a, it's like, hey, this is the song from the big mall chase, you know, and there's like, you know, Joan of Arc doing her aerobics and there's like, you know, Mozart playing on the, you know, on the, on the Jupiter 8, you know, in the, in the, the music store, you know, and um, I think I'm going to watch one of the old ones, maybe just the first one again, because I do what I I've wanted to watch the first two before, like um, pulling up the new one. Wait, how many were there? There's two. The first there's two and then others three. Excellent adventure, bogus journey and face the music. Um, But anyway, so I watched it again a second time the next day. And, you know, it's actually 
when I'm not like fear fuming with anger, it's it's a lot, it's it's better, and it's still nice, still got to me, still teared up, you know, and, and even knowing what's you know what's going to happen, and it was a nostalgic thrill. Again, it's a Bill and Ted movie. It's a compl- it's not most movie franchises or most movie series. You know, it, it's yeah. there's an innocence to it. There's there's a heart to it that you don't get with most things. Yeah, like it's real easy to look at those characters and say like, oh gosh, look at me, I'm a they're goofy, the dumb goof, blah, blah, you know. But it's like that's not what it is. You know, it's like. You know, most like uh, most movies in the 80s would have them as throwaway characters in the background for a scene or two, you know? Yeah. But there's something about those. And the, the re- series, the way it works, though, is that the, the people, who, the screenwriters who created those characters, created those characters long before the idea of a movie came around. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just like, hey, let's make a movie. Let's let's make like time a travel. Idea. Yeah. Well, you know, these were characters that these guys had developed in like. I don't know if it was like an improv theater or they had these characters developed, you know, to where it's that point. It's like, oh, we should like write a movie about these characters and have them, you know, it can be, it can be maybe it'd be a series of movies where these characters are in different like scenarios and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and I think that really adds to it. The fact that these characters came first and then the idea of making a time travel movie versus like trying to shoehorn, you know, like, oh, what kind of character can we have here? Oh, let's grab this kind of character and let's have this yeah, kind of character. Like a contrived thing. Even now, like, you know, <laughs> decades later, I mean, like, you know, Bill S. Preston and Ted Theodore Logan, just like their char- their, their characters as portrayed by Alex Winters and John Wick, you know, are just uh, a <laughs> yeah. it just feels right. You know, it just feels it just feels good. <laughs> nice. I'm going to have to watch that shit. I'm going to watch an old Bill and Ted maybe tonight and then I, I'm going to work my way up to the new one. And then I'm going to make people go in with me on the money to watch it. <laughs> well, you should you should watch them both. Watch, you know, you know, and remember they're they're, all, they're they were always were low budget movies. Yeah. You know, this isn't cool. going to be that some kind cool. of huge like. But I mean, you're somebody that will actually appreciate a low budget movie versus yeah. just saying like, well, that's kind of cheap. Why couldn't they have met? Why couldn't they have done like what Ghostbusters did? You, you know, or I mean, we're, they be we're low like, budget filmmakers. Exactly. See? Like, you know, that's the thing. We like that. Okay, I got an idea. Is there something you can do for our closing, like after the fact, that you can edit in? Oh! Like something synthy that's very, maybe something that's Bill and Teddy. Or unless you have a new thing that you just want to... Well, I could do something Bill and do. Teddy, or I could just like pull out all my old vacuum tube synthesizers and make something noisy and aggressive with Whoa. that. Oh, that could be cool. I've had these modules since the early 2000s. They're made by a company called Metasonics, where a crazy synth circuit designer eric barber kind of uh messes with weird vacuum tubes from like television sets and things like weird tubes that you're not going to find in a regular like tube amp or a tube preamp or something yeah they're used by nine inch nails and anybody who enjoys working with harsh electronical noise they are not going to sound pretty they're going to sound crazy and aggressive and make all kinds of crazy noise as you're going to find out now noisy and the tubes are so warm and hot to the touch oh uh, maybe you can set some food on there warm it up oh yeah look at that i'm gonna roast the, m- warm up these uh sour patch kids extreme <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll see you next time munchie boy wait no i don't do that part now it's like the munchie boys what do i do i forget how to do this now munchie boys